people related to the teaching, they put in 2,936 hours and that would have created funds of 66,206. So they volunteered and helped save the school system and Norfolk some money by doing that. And they just left the state convention. And in the state convention, all the teachers and secretaries and everybody collaborated and had 93,613 hours and saved two million one hundred ten thousand nine hundred and seventy three dollars and ten cents so they presented the city with a facsimile check saying how much money they would have gotten paid if they were on the clock so they did they did a very good job so I just want to mention that before the meeting started um, I want to call the meeting to order now I wanted to inform the public that the open meetings law is right over there in the corner it's nice reading if you want to read that. And now we'll have a moment of silence and then the Pledge of Allegiance of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I just wanted to mention tonight that Shane is going to be gone and Shane Wiedner is going to be gone and the mayor is gone. And I was going to be out of town, but I'm back because we need, needed a few more bodies in here. So um, we'll have roll call. Granquist? Here. Lange? Here. Merrill? Here. Clausen? Murin? Here. Mowing? Here. Faust? Here. File? Here. All right. Now I'd like to have a motion for approval of the consent agenda. We'll make the motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Now a motion for the full agenda. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. All right, that brings us to our uh, special presentations. And the first presentation is a proclamation for Extra Mile Day. Whereas the city of Norfolk, Nebraska is a community that acknowledges that a special vibrancy exists within the entire community when individual citizens collectively go the extra mile in personal effort, volunteerism, and service. Whereas the city of Norfolk is a community that encourages citizens to maximize their personal contribution to the community by giving of themselves wholeheartedly and with a total effort, commitment, and conviction to their individual ambitions, family, friends, and community. And now, therefore, I be it resolved that Dave Faust, Council President of the City of Norfolk, do hereby proclaim November 1st, 2014 as Extra Mile Day. Is there anyone here to accept that? All right, we'll go on to the second proclamation for teen driver safety. Whereas teens are a valuable asset to this community and state, the Drive Smart Nebraska Coalition and the Norfolk Panther JOOI clubs are united in promoting proven policies and activities in order to eliminate the number one killer of our teens, motor vehicle crashes. And whereas two teens on average are killed each month on Nebraska roads, and where teens have the power to influence their peers through peer-to-peer -peer teen driver safety education by participating in programs such as Teens in the Driver's Seat, Celebrate My Drive, and Act Out Loud, and whereas parents have the power to protect, protect their teen driver through modeling safe driving habits, understanding and graduated driver licensing system, spending time driving with their teen and setting driving rules. And whereas Teen Driver Safety Week is a time to celebrate young drivers and to promote the cause of teen driver safety. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Dave Faust, Council President of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, hereby proclaim October 19th through the 25th, 2014 as Teen Driver Safety Week. Is there anyone here to accept that? Mm -hmm. 
Yep. I also want to thank all the young people here and some of the Norfolk youth group looks like's here for coming and all the people in the audience. And the third proclamation is for International Alpha Delta Kappa Month. Whereas women in education constitute a great portion of the nation's working force and are constantly striving to serve their communities and nation in educational, cultural, and charitable programs leading to harmony, happiness, and peace among all people. And now, therefore, I, Dave Files, Council President of the City of Norfolk, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2014 as International Alpha Del Delta Kappa Month. Is there anyone here for this? All right, moving along, I'm going to open the public hearings, and I'd like to motion um, to open the public hearings. I'm going to put number 23 and number 25 public hearing together. So we'll talk about them together, and then we'll go back to the resolutions. Can I have a motion to convene as a board of equalization? I'd move that uh, we adjourn and reconvene as Board of Equalization. Second. Have a motion and a second. Roll call. All council members voting in the affirmative. All right, and it looks like, John, are you going to talk on the first one here? Or? Yes, I sure can. Okay. Uh, the, uh, our office received a complaint about the need for mowing and maintenance at 918 South 1st Street. Uh, we reviewed that property and the conditions were valid. Uh, property was in need of mowing. Notice was given to the owner via a certified letter on uh, June 6th and we also posted the property with a notice on June 6th. The uh, letter uh, eventually returned to the office but the fact that we had the property <coughs> posted gave us authorization to be on the property to do the mowing and that mowing was done on uh, June uh, 12th, I believe. Uh, the uh, costs for that uh, came to $178.18, and uh, the billing was made through the clerk's office and has not been paid. All right. And then, Trent, are you going to talk on some of the properties? Or? Yeah. The, uh, well, the other, the other item is related to the uh, property at uh, 1004 Kenningstein Avenue. Uh, we had a fire damage structure at that location. It was uh, fire damaged back in, uh, let's, I believe that was in uh, April, April 9th, yes. Uh, the owner was given notice to demolish the structure and uh, the city ended up doing the uh, arranging and having the demolition done on that property. Uh, we uh, are filing those costs against the property just so that the city has the uh, has a lien in place on that so that we could uh, potentially recover those costs. And there are some other uh, aspects to this that Clint could maybe add to on that uh, related to. Uh, well, this, this is the same property that we had the agreement with the uh, last uh, last meeting or the meeting before. Um, and the, the whole notion is the city's going to take acquisition of that. The reason that we're assessing those costs is that uh, um, without those, while we're waiting for some taxes to be paid and some of the things that needed to be done, uh, we wanted to make sure that the property didn't get conveyed away uh, to somebody else uh, and uh, someone would frustrate that agreement that we had. So this will keep us in place and if it is, uh, if the property, uh, uh, the property now also stands for that. So it's just an additional way to make sure that that which we bargained for will actually occur. Okay. Trent or John, have anything else? Anyone in the audience want to speak on these? On the 
on the initial property, John, have we had any contact with them at all, or that person at all? Heard that he was uh, residing in Omaha at some point in time. Uh, you know, we have not had contact back from this individual. I expect that we'll be, you know, potentially having additional contacts uh, related to this property and another one that he owns, but uh, they've been maintained and mowed since then, uh, and so uh, I really can't speak to how that comes to be. Do we know if the taxes are current? I believe they are. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else have any questions? All right, I'm going to close the hearing, and I need a motion to adjourn as Board of Equalization and reconvene as Mayor and Council. Would so move. Have a motion and a second. Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. All right. Now I need the consideration of resolution 201436, levying a special assessment in the amount of $178.18 against property located at 918 South First Street for mowing, weed control, litter removal, and property maintenance. I'd like to offer for consideration resolution 2014-36. Second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. And John, are you talking about this or Beth? It's the same thing. It's just the, the back of it. Okay. So it's on there talking. Anybody want to talk about this? Have any questions? All right, we'll vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2014-36 is adopted. All right, now could I have consideration of resolution 2014-37, levying a special assessment in the amount of $13,164.72 against a property at 1004 Kenningstein Avenue for demolition of construction and structure of the structure? I would move that we consider resolution number 2014-37. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Could I have roll call? All council members voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2014-37 is adopted. All right, now I'm going to open a public hearing to consider submitting an application to the Nebraska Department of Economic Development for a Community Development Block Grant and to review the implementation of CDGB, BG projects 09CR107 and 11CR007. And Tom, are you going to visit with us about that? Yes. Tom Higginbotham, I'm the director of the Northeast Nebraska Economic Development District. Um, I would like to introduce new staff, uh, Alyssa Koloff. She's a new staff member at the district. Uh, she's going to be working a lot on Norfolk stuff, so she's here to, to watch and learn. So she's here to watch me. So <laughs> God bless her. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're here to uh, have a required. Uh, I always got to have a little fun. So. Uh, this first uh, public hearing on this CR 14107 supplemental is basically extra money that the state of Nebraska had sitting around that people didn't spend. Uh, you'll see down below, we're gonna de-obligate some dollars. <coughs> you know, they get allocations from HUD every year and, and those funds are either utilized or not utilized or communities don't <coughs> utilize them all. So then they reallocate them for other projects. So we basically sat down with uh, city staff when this uh, <coughs> came up and uh, worked with Dennis uh, Smith mostly uh, to find if there's projects out there that we could uh, utilize these funds estimated around $250,000 with a two for one match. Uh, we're gonna use that for a 12 inch water main under Madison Avenue between 1st and 7th Street. Um, I would like to point out in your, in your um, attachment for, or your council packet exhibit or enclosure 27, page 104 is a map of the area uh, and it shows on there the red line that is uh, that sewer improvement and you can see that it's going to be in an area that is at least 51 percent low to moderate income. Uh, the blue, I just want to remind everybody, I know we got a, uh, some new councilmen here, but that blue area is the uh, targeted area for the community revitalization program. So all funds in some way, shape or form are spent in this target area and then depending on the activity like the sewer line, it has to benefit 
an area that is specifically 51% uh, or higher and it meets that because that census tract is 58.7. So I just want to point that out. So when we go through the other two grants about what has happened, all of these activities have taken place in that area. So uh, basically, I'm not going to read all this stuff to you. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I can answer any questions uh, you folks may have. Um, I do have uh, a couple of corrections uh, to the uh, CDBG uh, 09CR107 public hearing notice. I would like to point out that uh, part way down in there, we talk about the total cost of the project being $362,389.84. Uh, that is an error. Uh, we need to change that number uh, to $327,495. And then in the very next sentence, we talk about uh, deobligating some of the unspent funds. Uh, and that number needs to be changed uh, from $33,700. $117.31 to $30,874.34. And then also another change uh, in the next sentence after that, as a result of the city's requesting a, de is requesting a decrease in pr proposed accomplishments, uh, we say two home buyers to one, that actually should be four to three. And I'll explain that here a little bit. Uh, basically through this grant, uh, this grant is an 09 project. Uh, going back a couple of years. Uh, this grant, all of the matching funds that the city of Norfolk, we talk about in there, the city matched with water, sewer, and street improvements. Uh, most of that match, if not all of it, was uh, Michigan Avenue. You guys did some, uh, some street work and some water, sewer work there, which was a big dollar project. So most of that match is covered from that. And then also, I wanna point out that uh, through this program, we have downtown facade improvements. Well, this grant requires one-for-one -one match on signage and facade improvements. The property owners meet that 50% match. So we're covered there. Um, I do want to point out, uh, you know, when we talk about we were going to do four properties, we were going to acquire four properties and, and provide down payment assistance to four properties. Actually, what this grant has done, it's acquired three properties and currently has provided down payment assistance to two homeowners. Uh, the third one, the home is constructed. It's out there. We just can't find a buyer at this point, and we need to close this grant out, which is why we're deobligating the other rest of these funds so the, the state can close this grant out. And uh, our organization, the, the Economic Development District, we have regional funds that we can uh, commit uh, some of our funds to the next buyer because the next buyer of this home has to be low to moderate income because of the national objective. And since we have CR dollars in there for the acquisition of the land, then that buyer has to be at or below 51% of the area median income. So we're gonna put in the down payment assistance when that buyer comes forward. So that's why it's four and three. Any questions about that one or the other one, the new one? How long has the home been on the market? You would ask me something I don't know. I was looking for the one thing. Yeah, you were and you found it. Oh, less than a year, maybe six months or so, mm -hmm. three, four, six months, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. But we're marketing it. We're working with it. We're trying to work with the housing agency, you know, to, to find that right buyer and to find those folks and making sure that, that we find the right person. And because they got to be qualified for, a, you know, obviously, a first mortgage and, and meet those income guidelines. So thank you. Um, and that's a good question. That, and that grant will sit out. I mean, that property will sit out there until we find that buyer which is why we just can't leave this grant open forever. But we have down payment assistance to our organization to help that, that property when the time comes. Uh, the next grant is the uh, 11 CR 007. I don't have any changes to that one. Um, basically, uh, all of the matching funds on that one were <coughs> again Michigan Avenue. That one kind of bleeds over into this one. And also there were some downtown alley improvements that went into the match uh, from a previous grant. And a lot that's another thing uh, for some of the newer council member, members to note is a lot of these kind of run together because the state gives them on 12 to 15 months. Well, by the time we get one done, you know, we're into the next one and, and your guys' projects are big enough and the grants are small enough that we kind of use the Michigan Avenue to kind of stretch over three, which, which is fine and the state approves all that, so. Um, I do want to point out, you know, uh, you know, this is another accomplishment here. You know, we've we've done seven more facade improvements. Uh, 
and uh, things are just kicking along. Uh, you know, and these grants are great. You know, these grants are great uh, for two reasons. Number one, it, it helps revitalize that area, and, and basically we're, we have to vitalize that area to meet the national objective of low to moderate income, or the downtown facade improvements, as a reminder, fits that national objective through the slum and blight. It's, it's in a blighted area, so we can uh, meet that area that way. Um, and I also want to point out too, you know, the other benefit is, you know, if, if the Norfolk has a million dollars worth of projects that they're going to do anyway, and then these grant dollars are come available to help pay for that, that just frees up more of the city dollars to do more projects. So you get more done, they help supplement these projects, and then also in the end, you know, the private sector benefits from this. You know, you can look right out your door here. The prospect here is a CR project, Elkhorn Paving, you know, they're doing it. So a private contractor is doing the work on all the homes. Obviously, a private contractor has, has built the homes and eventually it'll be sold to a, to a family. You know, so, you know, indirectly these funds or directly these <coughs> funds, you know, benefit the, uh, you know, the private sector and helping, you know, them do what they're, create jobs and those kind of things. So it's good, good stuff, good stuff. Any questions about any of that? Anyone have anything to say or questions? Anybody on the council? I did tell Alyssa I was going to have all questions deferred to her, but. <laughs> all right. I'll close this public hearing then. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. And now, could I have consideration of resolution 2014 38 uh, submitting a grant application to the Nebraska Department of Economic Development for 250000 for CD? BG funds for comprehensive revitalization, supplemental activities in the targeted area, including 225,000 for 12 inch water main reconstruction under Madison Avenue between 1st and 7th Streets and 25,000 for general administration of the project. Move consideration of resolution 2014-38. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2014-38 is adopted. And I did close that public hearing, I think. So yes. I'm going to open up another one. <laughs> I'll open up a public hearing at the request of Robert and Marion Geyer for a zone change from OD to R1 at 2705 West Prospect Avenue. Is there anyone here to speak? I think Bob's here. Uh, good evening. My name is Bob Geyer, uh, and my wife and I are owners of that property in question at 2705 West Prospect. Uh, when we moved to town with Goodyear back in 1978, when we started up the plant, the property was actually zoned uh, CO. And then sometime after, I think part of the comprehensive plan of Norfolk, that was changed to the present designation of OD. And that's what it is today. And there's three properties that are OD. Uh, our property at 2705, and the one to the east of us, and one to the west of us. And all properties that join the, uh, we're just north of Faith Regional Hospital. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the zoning request for us to go from OD to R1 residential was approved at the most recent uh, planning commission meeting uh, back on September 16th unanimously. Uh, and probably because the city's comprehensive plan would like those three properties as uh, R1 residential rather than the way they are zoned today. Uh, the reason for my request to change our property from OD to R1 uh, started with a request that we had a request, a loan request to a, uh, a bank here in town, a national bank. And while it was being processed, uh, all of a sudden it was rejected or denied. 
And the only reason was, I was told, that we're a residential property in OD zoning. And apparently, because of the financial meltdown some years ago nationwide, some of the national banks changed their loan practices and tightened things up a bit. Uh, so I was told that the only reason our loan was denied was because we're in a zoning which is not residential, it's OD. Uh, so that's because we were requesting a home improvement loan, a substantial one, to do some major work inside. Uh, also found out that if at some point in the future I wanted to sell a house, the fact that we're zoned differently could present problems in a sale. And also found out from the city when I was in the process of making all these uh, inquiries that if our house was destroyed 50% or more by fire, uh, the fact that we're zoned to where we are, we would not be able to rebuild on that same property. So for those reasons, uh, we're asking to, uh, for change in, in uh, zoning from OD to R1. Uh, I started the request, the bank loan request back in July. August it was denied when they found out uh, that the zoning was kind of messed up for us. Uh, and then right away I went and got with the city zoning people and they told me how to go about requesting a change. Uh, but the only way the bank, or the only time the bank will restart our loan process is when officially we have a change to R1. And hopefully that will happen here tonight. And the reason I, I would ask for, uh, I understand there's a possibility that uh, this council can uh, have three readings in one night rather than go for three separate meetings. And I would request that, if it's possible, simply for us to move quicker with the bank to make this loan possible. Uh, that's pretty much it. Is there any, any questions at all? Does anybody have any questions for Bob or Trent? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion? I have the Planning Commission report then. The Norfolk Planning Commission held a public hear hearing at the request of Robert F. and Marion E. Geyer for a zone change from OD Office District to R1 Single Family Residential at 2705 West Maple Avenue. The Planning Commission recommends approval of the zone change on a 7 to 0 vote. All right. It's West Prospect, not West Maple. Mm, I'll have to change the letter. Thank you. This says West Prospect. It's, our paperwork here says it, but she'll she'll make that correction. Thank you. Um, all right. Any other comments? I'm going to close the public hearing then and look for consideration of Ordinance 5322, amending the zone district from OD to R1 at 2705 West Prospect Avenue at the request of uh, Robert and Marion Geyer. I'd offer ordinance. Number 5322 for consideration. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do we have any more discussion? Short title, please. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Madison County, Nebraska, amending the zoning district map of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, providing when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect, and providing for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Could I have roll call? <coughs> All council members voting in the affirmative, ordinance 5322 carries on first reading. Your Honor, I uh, move that we suspend the rules and consider ordinance number 5322 on second and third reading. Second. second. All right, I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Any discussion on that? Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative, ordinance 5322 carries on second and third readings. There you guys go. Have, uh, have good luck at the bank. All right, we'll, we'll move on to regular agenda. Uh, I'd look for consideration of approval of a change order number two with Penrow 
for Southwest Water Transmission Main 2013 project for a net decrease of 94,3864, resulting in a new contract amount of two million six hundred forty-six thousand three hundred thirty-seven and seventy-four cents. Do you have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. I have a motion and a second, and now it looks like Mark's ready to go. Uh, I guess this change order is basically, uh, <coughs> as it says, a decrease of ninety-four thousand uh, dollars. The main reason for the decrease was the uh, lack of the need for the pipe bedding. The groundwater was significantly lower than when we did the planning and the and the survey, so that was a, a good chunk of the decrease. Another decrease was due to um, less need of some erosion sediment control items. Um, we did some negotiating and talking with the contractor on the front end on some of those items. Um, and so that's basically the gist for the $94,000 decrease. Uh, I'd answer any questions you may have. Any questions from anyone or from the council? I guess that's, that's what I was wondering, how the lump sum broke out, but you had negotiations with them on the sediment control. Yeah, a lot of those, you know, so. those were unit prices we established on the front end. Um, uh, sediment control was a lump sum. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that, that was lump sum. And then there was like a cost per foot of silt fence that we okay. figured out. Um, to go with a, a different type of silt fence, and then also some areas where we didn't need as much as what we were seeing. So that's how we. Good uh, job. Like change orders like that. <laughs> on this side, Most anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we're on this side, so. When, when you're sitting back here. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to offer those motions. Yeah. Any other discussion? Could I have roll call? All council members voting in the affirmative. Motion carries. All right, now I'm looking for a motion to consider consideration of approval uh, change order number two with Elkhorn Paving Construction for Prospect Avenue paving improvements <coughs> resulting in a net increase of giving a little bit back of 27,486.56. I've moved consideration of change order number two with Elkhorn Paving. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mark? Uh, this change order, um, basically once we got the street tore up and we started excavating subsoils, our initial uh, goal was to go down 12 inches and replace it with geo grid and rock. Um, we had some unsuitable fill that we found, some railroad ties, some other ununiform fill or uh, subsoils. And with the wet and muckiness, um, we consulted with our engineer Olson Associates and they recommend that we go 18 inches that 12 inches to get a better sub base for, for our new road out there on Prospect. So that's basically uh, for the underneath the entire stretch of pavement from 4th to 7th, uh, difference from 12 inches to 18 inches of rock for our subgrade. That's the, what that change order is for. I've heard that the old train tracks came pretty close to there, but they must have left some stuff we out there. Some yeah. the street, so. yep. Any other discussion? So it did run the length? Then? Yeah, this, this change order, um, you know, we were hoping that was going to get better, but once we started looking at it more and more, we, it's looking like the whole street, so we went ahead and included the entire length of the street for the 18 inches of rock. That way, we have to come back a second time and yeah. on asking again. So. I mean, if, if we do get to the very east end and, and we don't need it, um, we'll go back to 12 inches, but it was looking like we are going to need the 18 inches. So there's a possibility we could have a... A possibility. A net decrease? <laughs> exactly. I haven't checked no. today, so I'm guessing it's no. not. No. 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 Did you see how Just BB was digging today? <laughs> All right. Anybody else? There's other things out there that will be coming. There will be another increase. <laughs> We've had to do some adjustments to sand or to storm sewers. <laughs> there, there's some storm sewer improvements. I just wanted to burst your bubble right away. Yeah. yeah. All right. The difference vote. between the two projects, the water line was pretty much on virgin new construction areas this is reconstruction and there's always lots of surprises okay please vote all council members voting in the affirmative motion carries all right thank you mark now i would look for consideration of <clears throat> of ordinance 5323 amending section 2611 of the city code to clarify the provisions related to connection to the city's water system. I'd move consideration of ordinance number 5323 on first reading. Second. 
Okay, discussion? I think Clint can answer any questions. What, what we've done here is just a couple of things. Uh, basically, uh, we've gone through this section as well as in part of the, of the next ordinance. And uh, in response to the assertion that there were some uh, things that could be cleaned up or made, made clearer in regard to uh, connections to the water system, um, we've, we've made some changes there. The changes that, that we've done there, just as far as clarification, are in 26-11B. And then just in, while we were in that section and working at it and, and looking at it, you'll see that we, uh, we made a change to uh, clarify in, in, in A as well some of the various sizes that, that were there. So um, after those questions came up, we, we looked at it and we think that this uh, is, is a beneficial uh, clarification. All right, thank you. Is there any other discussion or questions? Uh, I'd like the short title, please. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska to amend section 26-11 of the official city code to clarify the provisions related to connection to the city's water system to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative, ordinance 5323 carries on first reading. We move that we suspend the rules and pass ordinance 5323 on second and third. Second it. I have a motion to suspend the rules and pass on second and third. Any discussion? Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Ordinance 5323 carries on second and third. All right, now I'd like consideration of ordinance 5324 to amend section 2-5 of the official city code to include fees for use of recreational facilities to increase tire disposal fees and to clarify water and sewer connection descriptions to match wording in applic applicable code sections. Make a motion to motion. Ready? I'll make a motion to move on consideration of ordinance number 5324. Second that. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Clint, Clint will answer them if you want to. I can just talk about a couple of things that are in there. If you look at the beginning of the of the of the page, we've tried to do some of the clarification I referenced in the uh, in the prior section or in the prior ordinance. One of the things that we've done is we've we've added in uh, on the first page of the ordinance there on page 121 of your of your packet the. Uh, uh, what we've tried to do throughout the code is we've tried to have various places in the code where, where there are various fees or, or whatever that are provided for. And then we've took all of those and listed them in section 2-5 of the code in, in the schedule. So we're just clarifying with that first language that the, the actual requirement is uh, back in the various code sections that we've got and then we pull those forward and we're trying to kind of we can't always parrot that language in the little bit of space we have in the schedule of fees. So we're trying to, to make that as, as clear as possible. Then in regard to the rest of to the rest of what's talked about here, there are a couple of things that we're that we're adding. We found that when we were looking at that, we've got some recreational fees which are really no different than they've always been. I see Pat out there. Uh, those those recreational fees are the ones that have been utilized. The agreements that we've had over the course of the last year or two have all reflected those. They just weren't in the fee uh, in some of the miscellaneous uh, provisions of the fee structure. So we've, we've put them there so that they can be found and, and it's really, really no change. We've also got some changes in there for the for some garbage uh, things. The, those are on page 133 of, of your provisions. And then we've got, uh, we've, we finally, we've got a couple of things which are related to, again, the issue that was, was that, that it was suggested there could be some clarification. We've tried to do that on page 139 and 141 in regard to uh, uh, to certain water connection fees and sewer connection fees. And then we'll be able to uh, be happy to try to answer any questions you might have about that. Anyone with any questions? Essentially, these were already in there. We're just bringing them into our um, matrix here or well and we're just we're just kind of tweaking them yeah we really don't think that we've made any substantive changes here with the exception of uh, the increases that were talked about with uh, the tire disposal fees which uh, are reflected and what what we do with this ordinance is 
is when staff says they want to change something here, we kind of take them, hold them together and say, well, when do, when do we want to do this? And so we kind of did this at this point in time with the start of the new fiscal year and we'll do that periodically depending upon uh, uh, the urgency of, of the changes that are, are, are being sought. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd like the short title, please. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska to amend Section 2-5 of the Official City Code to include fees for use of recreational facilities, to increase tire disposal fees, to clarify water and sewer connection descriptions to match wording in applicable code sections, to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect, and to provide for publication of the ordinance in pamphlet form. Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative ordinance 5324 carries on first reading. Mr. President, I would move that we suspend the rules and pass this on second and third since the majority of these fees reflect just um, designating them out in this area. Mm -hmm. Second. I have a, a motion and a second to suspend the rules and pass on second and third. Any discussion on that? Please vote. <coughs> All council members voting in the affirmative. Ordinance 5324 carries on second and third. And finally, consideration of approval of resolution number 2014-39, adapting the 2015 to 2024 capital improvement program. And I think Randy has a brief summation of that. Yes, <laughs> emphasis on brief, I take it. Uh, and I need a motion for that first. Motion. Second. Thank you. Now, Randy, sorry. Um, this is uh, something we do every year. We look out 10 years and try and forecast what our capital outlay is going to be. And anything over $50,000 is supposed to be included in this. So uh, this is our major capital outlay uh, forecast for the next 10 years. We only put in here those assets that we have an identified funding source for. Um, and when you look at this, you'll see the 1415 column for the current fiscal year that we just started. That should look real familiar to you because that was in the budget that you just approved the last council meeting. Uh, the assets paid for with enterprise fund revenues are included in the respective water and sewer and solid waste funds, and those paid with general revenues are in the capital construction fund. Uh, the Planning Commission reviewed the CIP on September 16th, and there's a letter from them in the agenda packets recommending approval. As you'd expect, most of the items on here were the same as the items that were in the prior year CIP. We may have moved them around a little bit or changed the dollar amounts a little bit as we had better estimates. But as you'd expect, most of those items just flowed through and came up a, another year. There are a few big uh, changes to what was in the prior year, and I'll uh, point those out and then probably open it up for questions. The biggest one of those was seven million dollars for the uh, some point four million dollars for the library uh, expansion and renovation we've known for a while that we needed to do something with that but we didn't have a funding source identified for it now we have it on the ballot for a, a half cent sales tax increase which will last for three years and pay for this if it's uh, approved by the voters so at that point where we had an identified funding source we put it in the CIP Another big item you'll see in here that wasn't in before is the North Fork uh, Riverfront Trail Project. That's in here at one and a quarter million dollars. 125,000 of that is from Keno. Uh, 125,000 that's from the NRD. And a million of that is a federal grant that uh, is from the Game and Parks Commission. Uh, there's a numerous additional Keno items in here because of uh, a decision the council made this year to not pay for personnel out of Keno, which gave us more uh, funding for Keno for capital. So as you look through here, you'll see there's quite a few more uh, Keno items in the capital outlay. I won't bother detailing those unless somebody asks. The police also had a few items in here that are new um, to pay paid for public safety tax anticipation bonds in the earlier years. One of those is 267,000 for new consoles and uh, portable radios. The uh, radio consoles are basically a, a personal computer hooked up to the radio system. 
that old consoles were operating on Windows XP, which as of April isn't supported anymore. So we need to do something to uh, replace that and upgrade that. And then the uh, portable radios were also quite old and getting to the point where you couldn't get replacement parts for them. In the Enterprise Fund, there's a couple of big new additions uh, that are dropping into 1415. These are the Northeast Industrial Water and Sewer Mains. Uh, they'll serve Tejas and other industry in the area. The water main is 922,000 and the sewer main is a little over 1.8 million. And then also in this first year, an item that wasn't in there before is $200,000 for a water communications tower. Instead of paying to paint and repair the existing water tower, which was not being used except for an antenna farm, we're going to take that down, we're going to build a communications tower, and that will give those antennas a new home. Uh, I'd answer any questions you've got. Any questions for Randy? So Randy, on the um, uh, the um, 7.4 million on the library, that's set out for 15, 16. So if the voters approve it at the election time frame, how does that affect us in 20 or 14, 15? We may we won't begin <coughs> collecting those revenues. You got to collect them at the beginning of a quarter. So if they and you got to give them uh, give the department of revenue substantial notice. We won't have time to start collecting those January 1st. We won't be able to start collecting those until April 1st. A couple month lag before we get those revenues. So we'd have the first revenues probably in June. Uh, we may start using some of those revenues for design of the library. So there may be some expenditures a year earlier, but we would not envision any construction starting until that next year. And then it may lap over into the next year yet, but at this point in timing for the preliminary plans and the CIP, we put it all in that 15, 16 year, and it may actually end up being in three different fiscal years, but there won't be any bonds issued for that. We'll be paying for it as we get the cash in. But we won't have to do anything with the CIP that we're adopting here. No, I wouldn't anticipate okay. doing anything more. All right, any uh, other questions? Question. Josh? Um, Randy, a previous council had um, past recommendations for uh, beautification uh, project and master uh, landscaping plan for uh, major corridors um, in Norfolk. Is that project included in this CIP? Yes, somewhere? it's line item. I believe what you're referring to is the what we call the yeah the landscape master plan item 23 on under admin. And it's in there at one million six hundred thirty-eight thousand thirty-three dollars, with the first of those expenditures scheduled for fifteen sixteen. Uh, and that's been in there for several years. It keeps getting pushed back, but and it got pushed back a year in this CIP. But I think there are plans to do something with that money um, in the future. That, that plan was approved when, do we remember? Was it 2009 or 2010? That landscape master plan, do you remember, Dennis, when we? It's been a while. It was uh, just when they were finishing up uh, 275 to Battle Creek. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? I'll have the Planning Commission report. The Norfolk Planning Commission reviewed and approved the 2015-2024 Capital Improvement Program proposed for the City of Norfolk and makes a recommendation to approve it to the City Council as well. Any questions? Please vote. All Council Members voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2014-39 is adopted. Well, once again, I'd want to thank everybody for coming. I think that's all we have. So I'll call this meeting to close.